sacred city of Bacchus, Greek god of wine, of music, passion, disorder, Dionysus, Iacus, the names of Bacchus and the city of Thebes. Tonight you see men, women, friends, mothers, wives, daughters, husbands, children, fathers, sons, sisters, families. Tonight you see families, you see soldiers, citizens, citizens lovers, kings, politicians, queens, rebels, heroes, poets. Tonight you see our city, you see Antigone. Thebes, just before the break of dawn and the end of war.
We dare because it is right. How does our uncle dare keep me from my brother? Oh, sister, beware your pride. You forgot to miss our father. Killing his father, wedding his mother, his awful crime self proof, avenged by his own stubborn hand. You forget the death of our mother, who had a noose of her own making. And now our brothers, full of anger and pride, both boasting their claims to the throne, both dead in a single day, blood for blood, both slain by the other's hand. We too stand alone now, Antony, the last of the line of Oedipus. How should we end if we disregard the law? If we defy our king? Oh, sister, think what it costs to be always right. We are women. We should nurture men, not fight against them. We need our leaders. Strong rulers offer strong protection for our city, for ourselves. We must obey this order, Antigone, even orders worse than this. May the gods forgive me, I must do as I am commanded. To do more is madness. Go your own way then, a helpless woman, waiting to be led by men. I will bear the body of my brother. I will not ask him for your help, nor would I thank you if you gave it. God's I know you protect me. But if I should die, what happiness to be convicted of loyalty and reference. I am content to lie beside my brother rather than to stand for these views. He has very little time to please the living with me, while all eternity pleads the dead. So live if you will. Live until my days laws of heaven. I do not defy the laws of heaven. I obey the laws of the state. I have no choice. There is always a choice. Is it wrong to choose to live? I know I am weak, Antony. The temple of earth is not heavy. No! Then let weakness be your excuse. I will come to the body of my brother. I fear for you, Antony. Fear for yourself. You need not fear for me. At least be secret. Go quietly. I'll not betray you. You betray me. Do you think I care if the whole world knows I love my brother? Proclaim it to the city, to all the world, for I shall hate you even more. How can you be my sister? My heart is frozen at the thought of this. While well, yours burns blank with madness. Is it madness to know where truly really lies? I know my duty. What good is your duty if you can't succeed? The whole city is watching, Antigone. You're doomed to fail. And I have tried and failed. I shall fail. But why start to hold you fast? You are not my sister. I have no sister. Leave me alone with my madness. And to be no! Your words will not bury my brother. I will kneel, put my hands in the air. There is no punishment that can make me fear that honor. I am proud of my love. Go then. Go! To your death if you can't listen to reason! Greatest in joy in the city of thieves. Greatest in victory in the city of bondage. Now, now is the time to fill the temples with glad thanksgiving for the end of war. To shake the ground with night long dances, that their bodies of blood and delight are bounding.
her son, Megarius, sacrificed in this senseless war. A blessing on his name and for all who suffer and loss. I return now to the oracle. As the gods lead me now back to their altar, I will listen to their words and share them if you would hear and heed them. There never was a time, Theresius, when I failed to hear your words. And thus, I'm so far steered to study forth. I know too well, good priest, the debt I owe you. I wish you the blessings of heaven, my son. As the gods lead me now back to their altar, so they have led you to the throne of Thebes. Creon! Creon King! Creon! Creon! Shall be rewarded. 
The traitor, buried with nothing but shame. Never again will we stand in weakness. Never again will we draw our weapons lightly. Never again shall discord triumph over order. As the gods above is our witness on this day of victory and peace, never again shall brother slaughter brother at the gates of the Tell me your news. Uh, 
I'd rather not tell the story at all, sir. What if it's told, it must be told to the king. It must be a strange tale to bring such a nerve to the game. Strange is a good word. Miraculous is better. Sentry, what news? Frightening is best. Speak, soldier. Uh, Sergeant, Sergeant of the Watch, sir, make a report. Well, out with it then. Right, sir. It's this, sir. Somebody has gone and buried the corpse. Or rather, they buried it gone. What? There is no tree, sir. None whatsoever. Who dare do this? Well, that's the mystery, sir. We can make something of it. There is no sign of pig, no scratch of shovel. Whoever it was left no clues behind it. Nothing. The ground was hard and dry, no trace of wheels. It happened like magic, sir. A miracle. When the first watch showed us, we stood there amazed, speechless, if you can imagine. But there it was, the body, covered from sight. Not a real grave, of course, just this layer of earth. Like from the hand of some pious passerby, or maybe kicked up by some well-meaning dog. But there were no signs, not of animal nor man, which made us all a touch jumpy. We sit in on the first watch, accusing them. They pointed right back at us. Pretty soon, everyone was accusing, and everyone was denying. So we almost came to blows, and every man of us was ready to walk through fire and swear to heaven we hadn't done it, nor knew who done it, nor knew of anyone who might have known who done it. But then one of the men said something that made our blood run cold, and what he said was, was this, someone must tell the king. Well, there was no trouble there, my lord. So it was agreed. We drew lots for it, sir, and as you can see, I lost. So there's a report, sir. Such as it is, delivered as much against my will as yours, I'm sure. And I'm hoping you can see the difference, sir, between the messenger and the message. My lord, I fear the hands of God for this. Perhaps it is a sign. Can you not see the hands of our enemies before those of the gods? The rebels conspire in this action to upstate our, upset our newly righted state. But the watch has seen no rebel. What mortal would dare? You saw no one at the body. Not a soul, sir, no any sign of if the gods have willed... Enough of that! You speak like a superstitious old fool. Could the gods give a thought to this carrion flesh? Would they hold Polynesius in high esteem? Would they see him buried like a martyr? The man who came to burn our temples, kill our families, rob our lands, our laws? No. Blasphemy to think this is a man that gods would love. But what mortal would risk death to defy your law? Powers who profit from a city at war. Traitors within our walls bribe their servants to do things. They would overturn our law and push us back into battle. We cannot bend to their greed. Weakness and money is the greatest curse of man. Money can buy the weak of will. And even lead the well-meaning souls into betrayal and shame. Century, are you true to the state? Can your loyalty be bought? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean, the first one, sir. You can count on me true, sir. True blue, true blue, as I say. Find out who has made this burial. Bring him into my sight today. This is my test of trust in you. And as the gods above is my witness, if I find you unfaithful or false, no mere death will pay for your record. I am no rebel, my lord. All who stand against the state are rebels. You will learn not to look for unlawful gain, and it'll be a painful lesson. I'm just trying to do my job, sir. Then do it! Now! Go! Your wickedness will cost more. Go! No. No more words. You have your orders. Your words are like daggers to my ears. Your ears, sir, are your conscience.
You should drop your staff and take up the law. You argue very well. I mean, so, sir, one of the few real pleasures left in a democracy, that and the innocent to prove a guilty thing. Hear me, subject. I live to savor your pleasures. Misplaced ambition is a deadly thing. Let it not breach or exceed your grasp. For ill-gotten gains bring only ills. If you have sold your soul for money, if you fail to bring the doer of this deed, I will teach you the difference between guilt and innocence, and all your arguments will be with the God. It's good to be the king. What it does we learn. My only ambition is to find a doer of this deed. If heaven wills, I will. If not, here set living and free. It's damn unlikely they'll ever find me. Ambition drives men to good, and many it lures to destruction. Falsely lighting flames desire of greed, of power, till failure turns men other way, and they fall, consumed in fire. Ambitionless man towards the gods, the secrets of science and spirit, unlocking the mysteries of life, of energy, of matter, yet knowledge without wisdom dooms all our race to destroy what it creates. As in the past, so in the future. Little girl, 
screaming like an angry bird when it finds its nest empty and the, and the little one's gone. Just like that, she screamed, seeing the naked body. Crying and cursing, she scooped up the dust and cast it over the corpse. And then she started to crying, pouring out oils from this finer than her. With the gracious think. Three times she called it wailing in prayer, making offering to the cots of the dead. Well, sir, it, it took us a moment to get over the shock, but when our heads were cleared, Don became, took her in hand, charged her in the name of the king, and here she stands, I'm proud to say, though I've been sorry too. I have nothing against the girl and wish her no harm, but if the truth be known, I can't say I've ever valued anyone else's life more than my own. <coughs> Well, speak, child. Open your mouth. Do you deny this story? Do you deny this deed? I am no child but a grown woman. Both the story and my deed are true. Censure, you may leave. You are free from blame. Thank the gods, and thank you, sir. I knew it was just right. Right. Right? Right? Right. Back to my horseman, sir. Oh, the best of luck, little lady. Now tell me, grown woman, in as few words as you can, did you not hear the law forbidding this act? Your was plain enough. The word of the king is law. Yet you think yourself above the law. No one is above the law, but some laws are made higher than others. Do you think the order is strong enough to overrule the unwritten laws of heaven? The gods have delivered our city, Antigone, from the bloody hands of your brother. They require no such honor for a traitor. They require my family to mourn the dead. The laws of man may change moment by moment, but the rules of the gods stand true yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I have honored the laws of the gods above the laws of man. I have buried my brother. As I stand guilty before you, I stand innocent before the gods. Your act in itself may seem righteous, child, but you cannot turn the law into your own hands. Would you place the protection of one against the protection of the city? How does covering the body of my brother bring danger to our homes? Our city will fall without respect for order. Even an act committed in honor cannot stand above authority and rule. Judge me then. Enforce your order and let me die. I will trust myself to the judgment of heaven. She's your father's daughter. She shares the spirit of Oedipus. The pride of Oedipus. Stubborn, foolish pride, Antigone. I have no time for this game. There is no game, uncle. Yes, child, there is. You play the rebel, burning with passion. And you would have me play the tyrant when I would do nothing more than to save your life and name. I cannot make you a tyrant. You have chosen to be king as I have chosen to bury my brother. We both have our duties. My duty is to protect this city, to protect these people, to protect you, even from yourself. You cannot protect me from what I believe. Do you wish to die? I wish to live, but not at any price. Your punishment I can easily bear. Leaving my mother's son to rot in a field, that is pain beyond all bearing. The death you threaten comes to me as it must for every mortal. If sooner rather than later, I will thank you for letting me die and join my family. To leave each day without them as I do makes me glad to die. These proud words do not sit well on the shoulders of children. Who has forced you into this act? Who do you conspire with? I act alone. I conspire with the gods. Repent this foolish act, woman, and grow to your full flower. Or stand full of shame and face the judgment of our state. People of Thebes, my sister's child, this daughter of Oedipus, with whom I share my home, has broken the law of our city. 
She stands before us now, not in shame, but proudly boasting her deed. In this act, she names herself our enemy, when she could have been easily have been our friend. Before you and before the gods, I have vowed to protect you from our enemies, to enforce the order of law. The good of many must stand before the willful desires of one, even if that were my own child. The full punishment of thieves must fall to Antigone and to her partners in action. If you know of this crime, stand forward. Speak. Stand forward. Call forth her sister. Bring his meaning here. She fills my house with weeping and wailing. I thought in mourning for her brothers. But the thoughts of criminals often betray themselves after the deed is done. If your sister knows of this act, she will pay just as much as you. Would you do more than kill me? Since death is your only wish? No, there is nothing more I can do. Then why do I... Nothing I say can weigh you, as nothing you say can reach my ear. I have buried my brother. It was an honorable act. As anyone here would tell you, were their lips not locked with fear? These people are not afraid. None of them think it's you. Yes, uncle, they do. Yet they dare not say so. Only kings and rebels truly speak their mind. Your people hold their tongues because they are afraid. My only fear is that your willful passion will claim your life, child. No, uncle, I think I frighten you. I frighten you because I can say no. It is easy to leave when all will find you home, but hard when someone says no. No is a word for children, Antigone. It is not easy to play the rebel, to find fault. It is even easy to die. Death is an escape. What is hard is to live, to work, to stare into days of sorrow and loss, to accept responsibility and still go on. It costs much more to live than to die. These citizens are not afraid. They are wise in the ways of the law. These proud people hear the practical voice of reason while you cover your ears and turn your back and scream. You stand alone in your childish pride, unrepentant and unashamed. There is no shame in honoring my brother. Was not his enemy, your brother, a traitor? Yes, both of my brothers, the sons of Oedipus. In honoring one, do you not insult the other? He that is dead will not accuse me. He will, Antigone. He will scream from the underworld if you care for him just as much as the traitor. It was not a traitor, but his brother that died. Attacking his country, his home, defending our city. Even so, we have a duty to the dead. What about our duty to the living? Should we give equal honor to good and evil? In the land of the dead, perhaps that's the law. An enemy cannot be a friend even when dead. Must an enemy dead remain forever an enemy? Free to rise in spirit and turn our fears into war. Is the land of the gods to fight like ours? A bloody line between friend and foe. I have no answers for your riddle. I only know to follow my heart. My way is to share my love, not to share my hate. Go then. Go! If you will listen to not, if you won't listen to reason, share your love among the dead. It's me, my lord, still full of tears. I can hear nothing from her. Stand up, girl! Speak! Do you deny a part of this burial? Do you deny a part of this burial?
and the gods are witnesses. I can love no friend whose love is only words. You shall not die with me. You cannot claim that which you would not touch. One death is enough. How could I let up all my family must die? Ask our uncle. He would make me stay in your family. Do you find joy in taunting me? Now may I have a jest of bitter pain? Oh, Antigone, tell me, what can I do? How can I help you? You are my sister. You must die. Let me die with you. That was my choice. I drew up. Why is it wrong to want to live? Not if there is something to live for. Your way seems right to some, to others mine. So choose my life. So live. Your heart will belong to mine. It is right for you. Both creatures are mad, I think. One lately, the other from birth. Even the strongest minds break under misfortune and blow. Oh, Uncle, have pity. I do not want your pity. I have done no wrong. Your pride will destroy you, Antigone. Repent this foolish act and live. It is your law that is foolish. I cannot live under a law that is unjust. And I cannot live without my sister. You have no sister. Count her dead already. You could take her life so quickly. Your own son's bride? No truer match was ever made than theirs. My son shall find other fields to plow. My cousin, your father hates you so. What father would wed his son to so vile a creature? A stinging serpent who waits in his own house to betray him. You would take her from your own son's arms? Not I, but the law. And death will take her. Take them. Keep them locked up. The proper place for traitors and women. in front of all the people of these city. 
You have heard the judgment of this woman, my son. Do you stand now with her and against your father? I am your son, and by your decisions my life is ruled. I can value nothing, not even those I love above your good guidance. Only for this do sons pray for their sons. <clears throat> Obedience, loyalty, honor, and to be ready to strike the foes of their family. When a man's children turns against him, he has bred unhappiness in his home, laughter amongst his friends. Do not be fooled, my son, the warmth you hold for this woman. She has proved a proud and willful enemy and will betray you as she has betrayed me, as she has betrayed our state. Your passion will be cold comfort in the arms of such a creature. No wound strikes deeper than love turned to hate. There is nothing I prize oh, let me talk with her. No. There is no more to say. She has no wish to talk other than to boast of her crime. She has chosen from among her friends, Amen. She has chosen from among the dead. You are to choose from the living. How can you do this, Father? How can I not? <clears throat> if I tolerate a traitor in our state, I make myself a traitor too. No. She must face the law as anyone who places themselves above it. She is to be my wife. How can you send her from our home to her death? How, if I allow an enemy inside our home, can I hope to rule outside of these walls? If I can't manage my own household, this girl has taken the law into her own hands, and to twist the law to one's own pleasure is danger to all. Law and order upholds the state. He that leads the state must uphold the law. Only the leader and the law, obeyed without question, protects the safety of our people. I have stood in the blood of the battle, my son. I have listened to the councils of kings. There is no greater peril than disobedience and disorder. States are devoured by it. Homes laid to ruin, armies defeated, defeated, victory turned to rout. When order and disobedience might have saved lives and honor, the ruler who lives by the law, our people can depend on in a time of trouble and war, they can turn to in a time of battle. To betray the law is to betray our city, amen. It is to betray ourselves. That we cannot do, not for anyone. As far as the old man can tell, it seems that your majesty has spoken well. Father, man's wisdom is a gift from heaven. His understanding is the greatest gift of all. I neither am, nor would wish to be clever enough to prove you wrong. There may be men, Father, who do not always think and see as you. I can watch and listen and see. What you cannot see and hear, whispers spoken in the darkness, troubled voices silent by fear. Your people pity Antigone, Father. Their secret voices call this punishment unjust. The most unjust woman ever suffered for such an honorable act. There is no honor in breaking the law. There is honor in burying the dead. To mourn a brother fallen in battle, rather than leaving his body to rot in the field. Not so hard as you 
think. But to rule from emotion leads only to chaos. A leader does not listen to the cries and the whispers. Don't turn your back to me, Father. I understand the burden of your reason and the burden of your rule. I do love Antigone, but above your happiness and well-being, what greater good can any son desire? What greater gift can any father wish for his son? Only for this one. Father, not your first love be your own. Surely to think your way is the only wisdom, as yours is the only word, the only will betrays a shallow spirit. It is no weakness for the wisest man to learn when he is wrong, to know when to yield. So, on the margin of a flooded river, trees bending to the torrent live unbroken, while those that strain against it snap. Father, put aside your anger, set aside your pride. Invaluable wisdom belongs to the gods and is rare among them. The greater gift for mortals is to listen, to hear, and to follow wise advice. There is something to be said, my lord, for his point of view. As for yours as well, there is much to be said on both sides. So now I am to take lessons from children. No less you need be ashamed of. It isn't a question of age, but one of right and wrong. Now you can teach me from right and wrong. Is it right to admire an act of disobedience? Not if the act were also dishonorable. And was this woman's act not dishonorable? But not in the eyes of Thebes. The eyes of Thebes? I am Thebes. A one man state now speaks as a child. Not as a child, but as a kid. I am responsible for this state, as I am responsible for myself. The state and ruler are one. Only if you rule deserted isles. Here you must govern with people. This is the woman speaking to you. I will not listen. Of course you will take her part. No! No! Unless you are the one. It's you I am fighting for. How? When every word you say is against me. Only because I know you're wrong. Wrong! Wrong! To respect the law, to respect the authority. What oh. sort of respect struggles on all that is holy? This is the daughter of Oedipus that moves your tongue. Have you no voice of your own? Coward! Slave! It is not the cause of my pride to plead, but your cause and mine, the cause of our people, the cause of the gods. The girl has made her choice. You will never marry her this side of death. If she dies, she won't die alone. I will not listen to your threats. Is the threat to argue against your stubborn pride? You forget to whom you speak. No, you are my father. Were you not my father, I would call you mad. Speak, boy. Say what's on your mind! You can save your soft world for this girl. This girl that makes me her slave? I will not listen to you anymore! Father, you will listen to no! me! No! I listen to you whine. I listen to you cry and tell lies and shame your father in front of the people of Thebes. Bring out this girl now. Go! Let her die. 
before his eyes. Let her die with her bridegroom beside her. That is a sight I will never see, nor from this hour shall you again see me. Take her to a deserted place where no man has ever walked and lock her in a cave. Leave her food and unharmed. There, let her pray to the gods. I will not have your blood on my Let her pray to the gods for her reason. She will learn what hope there is in the gods of death.
you alone have chosen your fate and you face that as no one before you. Naomi, daughter of Tantalus, was doomed to such a fate. On the top of Mount Sibylus, she died, locked in chains of ivy.
brothers. Both will greet you gladly. Each of you I play to rest. For your prayers and offerings at your grave. And for this honor to you and the gods, which all good people should count as right, I have urged nothing but suffering and death. For serving your spirit, my brother. For serving your spirit above the law, I stand condemned by thieves, by Creon, to a solitary grave. How can this be lawful? How can this be just? To act rightly and to suffer such wrong? Never a bride. Never a mother. Unfriended, unmourned, unloved. What law of heaven have I transgressed? What just God would not spare me now? What help, what hope could come to us? In a world where nothing is certain, where devotion is deemed sacrilege and my goods and others evil. But if I have done wrong, I shall learn my lesson in death. These men, my enemies, are wrong. I wish them no worse instruction than mine. Gods of our fathers. People of Thebes, I am Antigone, daughter of Oedipus. I go to my rock hewn chamber. I have no shame in my actions. I have honored things to which honor truly belongs. Away with her now to her vaulted cell. Leave her and let her die if she will or call to the gods for grace. Her blood will not stay in the hands of Thebes, but today in our city, your life has ended. Others. 
I have read the signs of the sacrifice failed. How can the gods be unhappy on this day? They bring us peace and victory. Why would they deliver our city then turn our blessings away? Okay, an unhappy answer. This blight on our city is by your hand. Our fires, our prayers, our altars, our gourds with unholy blood. Blood that feeds with wild beasts and draws down vultures. Blood that by your order stains the ground with thieves. The unblessed blood of Oedipus spilled from the veins of his unburied son. No man has power enough to pollute the goodness of the gods. The heavens have led us into order and law. They would not turn us away for reason. I have made this law, this order to protect our city, to, set, to stand as a sign before our enemies. Humble yourself before these omens, my son. Even kings fall into sin. But the sinner is not forever lost who will repent and make amends. Bend yourself to the will of heaven. To the will of heaven? Or those of a priest? Your words have meant much to our people, Tiresias. But I know your art of old. I have seen you sell promises of comfort and work your miracles for gifts of gold. Are the words of our priests now for sale to those who see profit in blood? Would you with these rebels, keep us at war to fill the steep seats of our temples and line the walls of your with your temples with unholy gold. My lord, I have known the priest to be honest. I fear these words are indeed from the gods. This priest would not be the first to seek power and profit behind the mantle of a god. I know Teresius. How you bartered the soul of my son, Megarius. How you have stood against my rule. Your prophecy made my son and marked him for a price of peace, pushed him from the walls of our city, a sacrifice torn from my home by the gods. Or maybe it was sold by a prophet for gold. Have you bartered my son, Teresius? And now you would make me your goods to train and traffic for games. I understand your pain, my king. I forgive these bitter words. Your son sacrificed his body in battle, as did the children of all our state. He was pushed by his faith in the gods, not by the hand of a priest. My will was only for his good, as now it is only for yours and the good of our city. This warning comes not from my mouth, but from the lips of the gods. Pay to the dead his due. Wound not the fallen. It is no glory to kill and kill again, nor to send righteous children to living graves. Only a fool is governed by unyielding pride. It is not foolish to trust in the law. But great and terrible is the fall, Teresius, of mortars, of mortals who seek profit and gold by uttering evil in the guise of good. Even when the messenger is hated, a wise king will listen to sensible words. No. Train as you will, Teresius. But all the silver of Sardis and all the gold of India will not buy a tomb for this traitor or freedom for those who defy our rules. The law is written and delivered, and your purchase words cannot change that. Words can be purchased with but not understanding what price can be set on careful wisdom. None, good priest. And were you wise, you would choose your words more carefully. And were you wise, my son, you would more Listen. I do not wish to quarrel with you. You quarrel with the gods calling their prophecy false. The gods I honor, Teresius. It is their prophet that I call false. 
Your words are not free gifts, but they are trades and bargains for the people of Thebes. There are those of my calling who seek such profit as there are kings who seek unrighteous gain. Do you call your king dishonest? No, I call my king stubborn and proud. I call my king senseless and lost. I call my king to listen to the gods. Be careful, good priest. You tread on dangerous ground. All of Thebes is in danger, king, yet you will not hear its cry. Speak to me, then. Reveal your mind. But you share your words with no hope of gain. Can you still think my motive is greed? The words of the gods are not for sale. No, it is the will of the king. And Forgive me, sire. I that was young, and now I'm old, have never heard the words of this oracle, and seen them prove to be wrong. I have tried to rule this city with order and law, not to bring it to ruin. Is it weakness to yield to this curse? To put this prophet above myself, above reason and law? Yet if her words are true, both ways are hard. It is time to weigh all thought, to seek good counsel. What is it you would have me do? Set up a grave for the unburied body. Release Antigone from her rocky tomb. You would have me do this after all the words I have spoken. Yes, my son. The wise leader can admit a wrong. Your people will praise you as a merciful king. Your law was meant to serve, to protect the city, not to destroy. Yes. Yes. It's hard to give in. 
but I cannot stand alone against fate. Go now, and quickly. Let no hands but yours turn to grip. Hurry, my lord. The furies move swiftly against the follies of men. I will go now. Bringing only her sister to share the sacred rites. Call us Beanie. My mind is clearer. I have left this body unburied. And this woman entombed against the will of the gods. I will go now with my own hands and set it right. Come, child. Surely the gods will smile on us when they see what we have done. May the gods will it so. O oh, Bacchus, come to us now. Heal your sacred city. O oh, Bacchus, whose names are many. Son of the Thunderer. Give of wine. Dionysus. Iacchus. Bringer of joy. Child of Cadmus. Born of the thieves. O oh, Bacchus. Mighty twelve year. Come to us now in your troubled home. Thieves, my mother sickens for thee, the healer of all her ills. Our gentle rivers sigh for thee. Our stars hunger for your touch of fire. Our valleys long for your dancing feet. Our, Our nights for your songs of passion. Your son, weeping, 
a scream in the face of his father. He drew his sword and finally tore. With all exhausted at last to me. Whereupon seeing Priyan standing still on heart, he turned the sword against himself and thrust it even new inside. While we watched his life ebb away, he even reached to hold my sister. Embracing and taking it with his folding arms, his blood burning her body red. I ran to the cave and left him there. Two bodies entwined. What is his death? A witness to worlds filled with love. And the calamity that comes to the pride of man. What is the life of man? Fixed for good or evil, fashion for praise or blame. Chance raises a man to heights, chance casts him down again. None can foretell what fate will bring, or truly tell what it is. Crean was once an enviable man. He saved this city from her enemies. Shouting praise, he assumed a sovereign throne. His only joy was to protect this city as he sought to protect his family and his home. The honored king of a noble city, the honored father of our royal house. Now all is lost. For life without life's joys, Nothing but a waking death. <clears throat> Such a life is crayons. And for all of you who live without joy, riches and rank and shows of state, without the joys of home and heart, nothing but empty shadows.